And Bruce, in terms of plans for the future, do you plan to stay in Portugal or move to another country? What are your, your plans? We're staying here. Yeah. We love to be, <laughs> you know, hey, I paid my dues. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We, we, we really love our life here. Um, you can take day trips and see the most astounding, magnificent, beautiful, sites, towns that, that, you know, oh my gosh, you, you talk about creations of God, you know, they are so beautiful that you, human hands could not have made them. And then you go to places that human hands did make and you look at awe. This has been standing since the year 300 or even 1300. You know, that's, uh, that's very difficult. It's very different from what people experience like in the United States. Uh, a building from the 1950s will be torn down, you know, and replaced with something new. There are very few places that, uh, I, I, I don't think that the um, Americans, especially North Americans, uh, honor their history as much as is done here in Portugal and in Spain. And I think that's probably one of the reasons that um, the United States right now is in the predicament that it is politically. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about politics. No, that's, a, that's a very good point. And funny, funny things is that at least here in the North region, there is kind of a challenge for what, what is the first city that was made here in Portugal. They like to be like the oldest one. There's some, uh, they like the, the cultural um, history about the, how was Portugal in the past. Yeah. And they, uh, of course, they also, at least my point of view, the, there was a place where Portugal ruled the world on navigation and uh, they are very proud of it. And, uh, mm -hmm. I see people speaking about history. There always comes a topic about how Portugal ruled the world in the in the past. So it's yet yeah, uh, something interesting to 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 to, to know. And uh, yeah, Bruce, we are we are coming to the end. But I would like to ask you another question uh, in terms of resources. Uh, you know. Uh, Facebook or uh, books, media. What did you find that was the most helpful for you in this journey to uh, being an expat in Portugal? Okay. Um, let's start with Facebook because you mentioned Facebook. Um, there are over a thousand Facebook groups for expats and immigrants. Okay that are moving to or here in Portugal. Um, whether it's Chinese or, or let's say South Africans in Portugal. And even more specific, you will find a group for South Africans with miniature schnauzers, dogs in Portugal. So you can find a specific group very specific to either where you've come from, where you're living, you know, where you're living in Portugal, what your interests are, um, what you're looking for, and so forth. One thing I would caution, and and it 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 it's something that uh, my first book about Portugal. Uh, cue the book. Um, this one is. I this one is called Expat, Leaving the USA for Good. Just one second, Bruce. I guess I have the picture here. Let me see if I can share. That's it. That's, That's it. Perfect. Okay. Now, I wrote that book discussing probably the first third of the book talks about why we left the United States, what our reasons were, um, you know, why we felt the urgency, why we selected Portugal. And it goes through the first year, maybe the first two years, um, experience navigating, you know, uh, through, you know, and, and giving a lot of um, uh, anecdotes, 
stories that, you know, talk about our experiences and things that many people experience. After the book was published, I realized that the title of my book, Expat, Leaving the USA for Good, is actually what we call an oxymoron. It contradicts each other. If you're leaving the USA for good, that means, well, you know, I played on the word good. You're, you're leaving um, for something better, okay, or you're leaving permanently. And um, if you're leaving permanently and you're moving to a place like Portugal and you're staying here, you are not an expat. You are an immigrant. It's very difficult, especially for Americans, to deal with that concept because the connotation of the word immigrant, you know, is 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 like the poem at the the foot of the Statue of Liberty, and especially what's going on in the world right now about immigrants, uh, you know, all, all all of the political back and forth. But an expat is somebody who comes to a country for a time and a purpose. Okay, maybe to study, maybe to get a degree, maybe because they have a job maybe because they want to spend two years in Portugal, then move on, or maybe uh, they want to spend two years in Portugal and then go back. You're an expat. But if you are staying in Portugal for good, this is where you want your residence to be. You're not an expat, you're an immigrant. Okay. And I've gotten, it was difficult for me. We was really difficult to think of myself. There's, you know, the word expat has much more panache, much more, you know, it just sounds more glamorous than, than immigrant. Um, but you will find that many, many, many of the Facebook groups, getting back to Facebook, um, use the word expat as opposed to, it doesn't say immigrants from South America or South Africa in, 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 in Portugal, or it, it, it um, they, they use the terms interchangeably. Um, and I think probably be, because like I said, it, it, there's that connotation that conjures up with, you know, that, that an immigrant is lesser than an expat and it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be. And, you know, I don't know if, had I titled my first book, Immigrant, Leaving the USA for Good, if sales would have been as strong as they are right now, or if people would have been put off a little bit, I suspect that's why you find so much use of, 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 of expat. But that said, I would recommend, um, and if you go to Amazon, uh, and Amazon anywhere in the world, you'll see that there, there are over 50 reviews of my book um, saying how much it really did help them in terms of making the initial, okay, and going through the initial beginning stuff. Last year, um, a second book that I wrote was published, and it was called, that one's called Spanish Towns, Portuguese Villages. And I worked in both a journal for expats and immigrants. Uh, um, this picks up where the other one left off. You know, once you're here for a year or two, okay, then your level of sophistication, your level of experience has changed. And there you have to renew your residency. Okay, it's not just a getting a visa and applying for it. Um, there are so many things that you want to know how to deal with. Um, you've come to know that, that, for instance, that the Portuguese people, um, in terms of dogs and pets, for instance, Americans treat their dogs and their cats like children. The Portuguese people don't. Okay, And you have to get used to that. So, so this book is a follow-up, and it talks about, okay, our, 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 our last four years. It, it's kind of like the intermediate level. Okay, where are we at now? Now that we, we got here, that we got settled, that we found a place, we moved, okay? We, we found that the first place that we bought just didn't suit our needs. And what did we learn from that? Would we rent instead of buying? Would I advise people? It's up to, it, it, it's, it's up to the individuals. Frankly, 
the thought of renting, moving, um, unpacking everything, hanging all of our artwork, and then two years later, taking it all down and moving again uh, because I'm renting. Uh, that doesn't appeal to me. But what happened to us? We lived two years in the first place that, that we bought and um, it didn't, it, 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 it wasn't really, it was, the, the town was too small. Okay. It didn't, it, it, it had one cafe. There was not even a, a snack bar. Uh, the people were wonderful. And I would walk our dogs um, around the streets and that's where, when you talk about doctors, getting back to my doctor, um, she told me two things. She said, Bruce, you know, based on the lab reports and based on, you know, the consultations and based on knowing you, I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, you must live in a one level house. Okay. Um, you cannot go up and down 37 stairs eight times a day because the kitchen was downstairs, the bedrooms were upstairs, the offices were in the middle floor. But the dogs need, we had three dogs, I couldn't walk three at once. So they would go out four times a day, up and down, okay, times two. And I guess a, a note that I would end my conversation with you about this is that we had before leaving the United States, before moving to Portugal, we had in our minds where we wanted to live, what kind of place we wanted. We didn't know specifically, um, but we knew we wanted a place where in the center of the village would be a church and the church bells, we could turn off, our, we didn't need our cell phones and we didn't need to wear watches because the church bells would tell us the time. And the other thing I wanted was cobblestone streets. I mean, the charm of a Portuguese village with a church in the center. I loved the two years that we spent living there. And by walking my dogs all the time, I got to meet our neighbors. And little by little, I started talking more and more to them. They started talking more and more to me. They helped me with my Portuguese. Um, I could ask them questions and so forth. But the doctor said to me, Bruce, you cannot, you cannot walk dogs, especially in a place with cobblestone streets because they are very slick. And when they're wet, they're even slicker. And I had a very bad broken leg that was causing me a lot of pain. Um, and, and so that's what the doctor said. So um, the first book kind of ends that we moved, we, we decided, we knew that we had to move and to another place. And the second book picks up with what we learned from living here the first two years that help us determine where we would look and where we would live, you know, and move to. So we've had, uh, we, 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 we've, I, I would say we've had very fortunate experiences. Um, all of the Portuguese people that we have met have been, especially when they see that you're trying to honor them by speaking their language, even if you stumble over it and even if you get it wrong, they care about that. Okay, all of a sudden you'll get a knock at your door and it's your neighbor that you don't even know his name or her name, but they're bringing you a basket of fruit from, 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 from their gardens, from, you know, um, it's, it's a very, very good country during a very, very difficult time in the world. So that there are going to be things, you know, um, that aren't the way they used to be, you know, uh, Portugal might be a small country, but it's very strategically located. And so, you know, um, you're coming from the United States where everything is told you that Russia and China is bad. And, and, and I'm indoctrinated to that. That's what I, so when you read that Portugal is now increasing the amount of gas that it is buying from Russia, how do you feel? You know, how do you feel? How do you feel when you see on every street a number of Chinese shops, you know, with Mercados Chines, you know, that that um, because there's a very strong relationship 
between Portugal and China and so forth. These are all things that um, you should learn about. You should, you know, you should study, you, you, you know, you should familiarize yourself with, with um, whether it's through Facebook groups, whether it's through the books that I or others have written. Uh, all I can say is we're not moving. We love it here. So I guess on that note, um, I've shared with you what uh, the, I could. And I hope if any of your uh, viewers or if any of your clients, you know, have a specific question that I can answer, feel free to go through Victor and, and I'll be happy. Bruce, I, I cannot stress enough how, how glad I am for you to have this interview with me talking to our public very very um helpful insights you know everything we talked about the medical uh, conditions the your, your experience uh moving to portugal they are very very uh, uh they're very nice and uh, i'm really glad having you as a friend i mentioned this very many many times for you it's nice to know that we can have someone to rely on and you being here, it's just you showing that we do have a, a nice friendship. And not only for, for, from, for you, but uh, everybody here. Also, if you want to ask me anything, uh, you can please go ahead. I'm all, all for you. And thank you again, Bruce, for, for being here. One last thing, a PS. There are many groups, there are many businesses out there that are trying to do the same thing, that are competing for the same audience, that are competing for clients that want to move to Portugal and will help you, you know, get through, you know, to, to get your NIF, to open a bank account, to, you know, to do all of this stuff. Victor's got an extremely talented, professional and personal uh, staff that works with him. But beyond that, in terms of resources, I have never seen a single other relocation specialist that researches and puts out as many articles as, as, as Victor. And, and not just puts them out, but updates them because things change here. And so I would very much encourage people to go to your website. And, and um, I don't know if it's called essays, blogs, writing. I don't know what the, the tab would be, but there are hundreds of articles. And if you really want to know what's going on or, you know, what it's like to move from South Africa here, what it's like to move from Brazil here, what it's like to move from the USA here, what it's like to move to Coimbra, what it's like to move live to, and to live in, in, in Braga, in, in all of these articles are there, and 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 I highly recommend leave Europe thank and you. staff. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Bruce. Yes, we we tried our best to give the best information to people, and this is uh, another example. Of me being here with you is to show the reality of Portugal, and uh, just like you, I'm very happy living here, and I don't plan to move anywhere else. And in my lifetime. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruce. My pleasure. Anytime I can help, Victor, it is my pleasure. You Thank take you. care and best wishes um, to all of your viewers, to all of your clients, um, to anybody listening to this. Uh, we're all here to help. We're here to help. You take care, folks, now. It was you a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.